Greetings! This is Sean Bagshaw from Outdoor Exposure Photography and Photo Cascadia. In this short video tutorial, I'm going to share with you a technique for quickly and easily creating 32-bit extended dynamic range images using Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop. In my video tutorial series called Developing for Extended Dynamic Range, I teach many different techniques for extending dynamic range in a photograph, but the technique I'm going to show you today wasn't possible when I produced this video series. Future updates to the video series will include this technique, but I thought I'd share it with you now so you don't have to wait. To be able to perform this technique, you'll need Lightroom version 4.1 or newer and Photoshop CS5 or newer. It's common in outdoor photography to be confronted with scenes that have a degree of contrast that is too extreme for the camera to accurately capture in a single exposure. This sunset at Smith Rock State Park was just such a situation. When I exposed the sky correctly, the canyon appeared completely black. And when I exposed for the canyon, the sky became overexposed. RAW files from the latest DSLR cameras contain more dynamic range than ever before, making it possible to recover highlight information and shadow information all from a single RAW file. But there are limitations to this, and it can create problems with noise, particularly in the darker areas. By taking a series of exposures one stop apart, I was able to record all of the tonal information in this scene. The trick now is combining the tonal information contained in five different exposures into a single image. HDR software offers one possible method for doing this, but it often creates an unnatural look and quality issues that don't work for the particular type of photography that I want to do. My preferred method of blending multiple exposures is to use layers, selections, and masking techniques including luminosity selections and masks in Photoshop to manually combine the exposures. This approach takes time and a lot of practice, but gives me the greatest amount of localized control, creativity, and image quality. I detail these advanced blending techniques in both my Developing for Extended Dynamic Range and the Complete Guide to Luminosity Masks tutorial series. Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw offer a solution that is somewhere in the middle of these two approaches providing a quick and intuitive way to combine exposures without the look and quality issues that HDR tone mapping software can present. I recommend this technique for folks who are still in the process of mastering how to use layers and masks to blend exposures successfully, or for those who are looking for a quick method that may prove to be time-saving and good enough. Start by identifying the series of exposures that you want to blend. I find it's helpful to apply any lens corrections, chromatic aberration removal, and image alignment adjustments first. I'm going to synchronize those adjustments across all the images. And then now with all the images selected, I can go to Photo edit in and select merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. The HDR engine in Photoshop will open the images, align them, and create a high bit depth 32-bit image file with all the tonal information from the series of exposures. You could choose to have Photoshop HDR Pro tone map the 32-bit image into a 16-bit image file with adjustments, but that will create the well-known HDR look we are trying to avoid. Instead, simply save the image file as a 32-bit TIFF file. At this point, it isn't possible to see the full dynamic range of the 32-bit image all at one time. This slider allows you to scroll through the full tonal range of information that the image contains from shadows to highlights. 
If there is something moving in your series of exposures that might create ghosting, such as the clouds, you can use the Remove Ghosts checkbox and then find an exposure that will provide the least amount of ghosting in that area, in this case the sky. Click OK and HDR Pro will generate the 32-bit image file. The great part comes when you save this as a 32-bit TIFF file. Just select Save or type Control or Command S. The 32-bit TIFF file is automatically imported back into Lightroom where you can now use Lightroom's familiar controls to make adjustments to it. Notice that in a regular RAW file, the maximum exposure range you have is from minus 5 to plus 5, or 10 total stops of dynamic range. In a 32-bit TIFF file, Lightroom now has an exposure range from minus 10 to plus 10 or 20 total stops of dynamic range. Having that additional dynamic range makes it possible to adjust the exposure, highlights, and shadows so that you can get a complete image with much better overall tonal balance and tonal range in all parts of the image. The dynamic range here is much greater than would be possible from a single exposure, but with much more natural appearance and better image quality than if Photoshop HDR Pro or a third-party HDR software had been used to tone map the 32-bit image file. At this point, you can choose to make further adjustments here in Lightroom for white balance, contrast, clarity, vibrance, and saturation, or you can open up the adjusted 32-bit file as a 16-bit TIFF file in Photoshop if you prefer to use Photoshop's capabilities to finish developing the image. If you do this, make sure that you select Edit a Copy with Lightroom Adjustments when you go to edit in Photoshop. If you don't have Lightroom, you can do the same technique using Bridge and Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop CS5 or newer. In Bridge, select the series of images that you want to merge. And then from the Tools menu, select Photoshop and Merge to HDR Pro. And it will do that same series of adjustments and create the 32-bit image file. Once you get to here, the process is the same as we did with Lightroom. You can remove ghosting, select OK. The 32-bit image file will be created. And then save the 32-bit file from Photoshop by selecting Save. Then you return back to Bridge and select that 32-bit file which you can then choose to open in Adobe Camera Raw. And in Adobe Camera Raw, just like in Lightroom, you now have plus 10 to minus 10 dynamic range for a total of 20 stops of dynamic range. And the types of adjustments that you would make here in Adobe Camera Raw would be just the same as what you could also do in Lightroom. Like I said earlier, this isn't a technique that I use in place of blending exposures by hand with layer masks. That technique still gives me the best flexibility and control. I use this technique when time is more important than perfection, to quickly develop batches of high dynamic range images, or when I want to quickly evaluate the potential of a particular image. If you aren't interested in manually blending exposures with layer masks, this might be a great solution for you or it could serve as a temporary technique while you're learning more advanced manual blending techniques. If you would like to learn more about my fine art image developing workflow, additional techniques for extending dynamic range in your images, or advanced techniques using luminosity masks, I invite you to check out my video tutorials at outdoorexposurephoto.com slash video tutorials. Thanks for joining me. 
Now get out there, give it a try, and let me know how it goes.